Here is the very interesting question you might frequently see in the recent tests. During virtual meeting, one of the participants is actively consuming lunch, which creates a lot of frustration for you, since you can't concentrate. As a team lead, you scheduled the discussion during the lunch hour, since this was the only time available, as you need to finalize a design solution for your project. What would you do next? And you have five different choices, and you need to select all that apply in order. Choice A. End the meeting as quickly as you can with the reason that you can't concentrate. Choice B. Immediately after the meeting, contact the participant who was actively eating and discuss the inappropriate behavior. Choice C. Thank everyone for joining the meeting during lunch hour. Choice D. Make a humorous comment at yourself for not being able to concentrate. And last but not least, choice E. Meditate after the meeting to calm down and practice meditation on how to concentrate better. Not an easy question, would you agree? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. And on my end, I'm going to move forward and share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. When sharing with you my answer, I need to acknowledge that everyone is different and your choices for this particular question might be different as well. What's interesting is that this question doesn't have a single obvious answer and is designed to test your particular personality. Multiple complex aspects of personality and leadership are tested in this question. There is no obvious answer, but solution to this challenge might be guided based on a few considerations. As you're probably well aware, virtual team meetings became a reality of corporate work after COVID-19. And even though remote work provides more flexibility to people, for example, it eliminates the commute, some aspects of remote work make it more stressful. For example, reaching alignment on an issue, or resolving a critical problem, or meeting a deadline. Due to the isolation, it is also much easier to experience high level of anxiety, irritability, and reach burnout during the remote work. Companies recognize this trend and train their leaders to respond to remote work challenges. They also test job candidates to make sure they possess necessary traits. To successfully answer this question, I recommend practicing servant leadership and try to understand and appreciate other team members when answering this question. I believe that the key themes tested in this question are sympathy, appreciation, and self-control. Obviously, there are multiple different ways to look at this issue, but in general, candidates for the leadership positions are regularly tested on the sympathy and appreciation skills needed for the position. Conflict in this question is created since team leads scheduled a meeting during the lunch hour. All participants choose to spend lunch time with the team lead to help him or her to solve the problem and meet the deadline. Team lead in this question has multiple ways to demonstrate appreciation to other team members. For example, team lead can change the mental message about what's happening. Another thing, unless others complaining, team lead can control reactions and emotions. In addition, in the described scene, since meeting is scheduled during the lunch hour, it is expected that the people will consume lunch during this time. And also, leaders are expected to demonstrate sincere appreciation of people joining the meeting during lunch hour to help meet the deadline. People in leadership position can demonstrate better leadership and lead by example. Some behaviors, though, might be considered non-professional. For example, abruptly ending the meeting for no reason or non-justified reason. Another thing, creating a drama and contacting an employee to discuss perceived inappropriate behavior. Team lead may not know what else is going on in this person's life, and giving somebody a benefit of the doubt might be a good guide for the next step. Some things for seasonal leader to consider might be what else is going on in this person's life. Maybe team member doesn't have any other reasonable options to eat lunch due to the schedule conflicts. Or maybe a person is stressed out or burned out and contacting the person would be the last straw to start a fire. Just because of the positional power team lead can do something doesn't mean that he or she should do it. Key traits that are tested in this question are sympathy, appreciation, self-control, humility, and benefit of the doubt. In remote work environment, it is especially easy to make a mistake, misjudge someone, 
lose temper and misunderstand the situation. Also, depending on your own internal level of stress, it might be hard to practice self-control. Also, using your positional power as a team lead to dictate your, in quotes, unreasonable way of doing things may lead to team's disengagement. In remote work environment, it is especially hard to know what else is going on in team members' life, and it is very easy to misjudge and make a mistake. I believe that the red flags this question is looking for is lack of appreciation for team members, mismanagement of anger and frustration, and unreasonable and unjustified use of positional power. And here is why these traits are red flags. Leaders who acknowledge and appreciate their team members will have a happier and more motivated workforce. It's important for people leader to be able to balance their emotions and practice self-control. Sometimes using positional power is justified, but it is unwise for a leader to create a conflict and lose control based on the fact that someone is consuming lunch during the lunch hour scheduled meeting. In addition, also making a humorous comment about yourself and acknowledging an individual personal issue can a lot of times discharge tense situation. Based on all of this information, the least recommended answers might be choices A and B. Choice A, ending the meeting as quickly as you can with the reason that you can't concentrate, may not be a good choice. And choice B, immediately after the meeting, contacting the participant who was actively eating and discuss the inappropriate behavior may be unreasonable and unjustified use of positional power. Considering sympathy, appreciation, self-control, humility and benefit of the doubt being essential traits for a good leader, I would recommend choices C, D and E being the most recommended answers. The goal of a leader is to demonstrate servant leadership, appreciate everyone joining the meeting and focus on the end goal for the discussion which is finalized design for the solution. Based on this, my recommended answers are in order. Choice C. Thank everyone for joining the meeting during lunch hour. Choice D. Make a humorous comment at yourself for not being able to concentrate. And last but not least, choice E. Continue improving yourself and meditate after the meeting to calm down and practice meditation on how to concentrate better. Do you have any other suggestions? Please make sure to post them in comments. Here's a very interesting question to test your customer service skills. You work as a retail associate at the New Wave store, which is part of a large global chain. Customer browses the selection of clothing items and looks very frustrated and dissatisfied. She approaches you and after you check on the computer, you can't find the item she is looking for inside the store. What would you do next? And you're presented with four choices and you need to select all that apply. Choice A. Offer to place an order at New Wave online website. Choice B. Apologize that item is unavailable and suggest to try Amazon.com or another retailer. Choice C. Mention to the customer that there were supply chain shortages everywhere now. And then last but not least, choice D, call to the store manager to discuss the situation with frustrated customer. Interesting question, don't you think? Take a close look to see if you need to pause this video to come up with the solution. Are you ready? On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please educate us and share your solution in comments. I believe this question is designed to validate your ability to handle a conflict and turn things around. The key of successfully resolving the conflict is ability to collaborate with the customer and focus on the solution. Main objective of the interaction is to listen to the customer, understand what customer is trying to do and try to be genuinely helpful. There are three best practices. Number one, always project how can I help you attitude. Number two, take responsibilities for the issues. And number three, avoid arguing and escalations. I believe there are three essential traits this question is looking for in the candidate. Focus on the solution, project helpful attitude, and avoid escalations. There are also red flags that question is trying to pinpoint. Number one, lack of responsibility, and number two, searching for excuses. Considering this, choices D and C are the least recommended choices to answer. Let's look at choice D. Call to the store manager to discuss the situation with frustrating customer. This is the worst one to select trying to resolve the situation because it takes away time from the manager 
and shows your inability to handle a conflict and resolve the situation. I also suggest that you do not select choice C. Mention to the customer that there are supply chain shortages everywhere else now. Your role as retail associate is not to focus on excuses, but find the solution to the customer. Based on this, I believe that the best choices here are choices A and B. Choice A, offer to place an order at New Wave online website. And choice B, apologize that book is unavailable and suggest to try Amazon.com or another retailer. It is the key to make customer feel happy and appreciated by focusing on the solution and trying to be sincerely helpful. By offering these two choices, you show that you do not just trying to make a profit, but also able to offer outside solutions, for example, using Amazon.com retailer. In addition, ability to resolve conflict yourself and keeping customer happy without escalations to the manager is also extremely helpful skill. Do you have a better solution? Please make sure to post your ideas in comments so we can all learn. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. Here's the very interesting question to determine your personality. You just arrived at the corporate event. You do not see anyone you know there. What would you do? You need to select all that apply out of the four different choices. Choice A. Observe others. Wait for people you know to arrive. Choice B. Approach people you don't know and introduce yourself. Choice C. Temporarily leave the event and come back later. Choice D. Check your itinerary to ensure you are at the right place. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the right answer. So you can always pause this video to determine the answer that you would want to choose. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to answer and have different recommendations, feel free to share in comments. I believe that in this question, you are being tested on whether you are a good team player. Work environments are very collaborative and companies are looking to hire people that work well with others. There are no easy ways to determine if a candidate is a good team player. For example, recruiters do not screen for quality candidates, but mostly focus on technical skills and try to submit as many candidates as possible to increase their chances. More than 50% of resumes contain lies. Non-team players hype their resumes to look like A players. Questions on behavioral interview are not very revealing. References checks are generally worthless. This is why companies ask questions on the test that might help them to determine the right candidate. During the assessment tests, companies look for essential traits for the team players. They typically look if the candidate is social, if candidates adapts easily to difficult situations, if candidate tackles challenges with enthusiasm, and whether potential employee is a creative problem solver. They also look for the red flags, and typically red flags are that the candidate likes working solo, doesn't take initiative, and maintains a status quo. Obviously, with these types of questions, there is no right or wrong answer, but there is a least recommended answer which you can spot based on the red flags. Because red flags are that the candidate doesn't take initiative, afraid of unfamiliar situations, and passively maintain status quo, the choices to avoid might be choice A, observe others and wait for people you know to arrive, or choice C, temporarily leave the event and then come back later. Based on what we know, organizations are looking to hire people that are team players, that can introduce themselves and feel comfortable and confident in unfamiliar settings. One thing to keep in mind is that you always want to be honest and answer how you would behave. But you also need to understand that your behavior is unpredictable until you actually in this particular situation. Are you sure you will never behave as the best version of yourself? Can you become intentional and be courageous even if you feel uncomfortable about the situation? Keep in mind that you can also change yourself and behave as a team player. Considering the team player traits are being social, being easily adaptable, and being creative problem solver, the most recommended answer here 
is choice B. Approach people you don't know and introduce yourself. Do you have a better version on how to answer this question? Please make sure to share in comments. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support, and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections, or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.